What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, my <laughs> special guest, my special guest, Ashley Nicole Moss. Welcome again to nice. this channel. I know. It's, it's been a while. I'm excited to be back. It's fun. I'm looking forward to it. Ah, great honor. I talked with you in backstage. Um, so, before uh, New York Knicks, I want to talk with you about the biggest rumor <laughs> in this offseason. <laughs> I want your opinion uh, about uh, Donovan Mitchell deal going wrong. What's your opinion about this? You know, I would have loved to have Donovan in New York. Um, you know, he's a great guy. Um, I know him. And like I said, he's a great player. And I've said that before. A great person. He's a hometown kid from the area. So it would have been great. It would have been the perfect um, storyline, if you will. But I think it became evident that the Jazz were going to ask for a lot for him. And You know, when you have a lot to offer, a team looking to move a player is going to try to go ahead and reap the benefits. You know, that's normal. I don't think that the Jazz were trying to do anything, you know, out of the ordinary. If you are going to a team looking to trade your player and you know that team has a lot of things you can get in return, you're going to try to get every single thing. But I think the Knicks were smart and they offered smart packages and they offered packages that weren't going to set them back. I think they've kind of learned their lesson. We've done that in the past. You look at Carmelo Anthony, perfect example. You traded a bunch of young guys, a big part of the house away, and ultimately it didn't amount to any real success in terms of um, a championship, right? So I think that the Knicks learned their lesson. They weren't going to go ahead and rock the boat that much. And they ultimately made a decision that was best for them. And that was walking away from a deal that wasn't going to go ahead and work for them in the long term. I think that if Donovan was going to be the piece that made this team a championship team right away, I think then that's a different conversation. Then maybe you pull the trigger and maybe you go ahead and you do what needs to be done. I think they knew that he wasn't going to be the championship piece that this team needed. So to go ahead and make the move for him at the extent that the Jazz were asking um, just didn't make sense. So I'm not mad at it at all. It's disappointing, but I'm not mad. I, me too. I agree. I joking with Alan Hunt in this channel. Uh, Spider-Man 4 coming to the Knicks? No. Spider-Man 4? No. <laughs> coming. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, c'est la vie. C'est la vie. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so uh, we talking about Spider. Uh, mm -hmm. I talk, I want to talk with you about RJ Barrett. You know? What's your opinion on, on the RJ Barrett extension? Well, you know I love RJ Barrett, so I'm extremely excited. That's my guy. Um, I call him the six god, but I actually I call him the nine god because he wears the number nine from Toronto and Drake's the six god. But um. Maple Mamba, Broadway Barrett, whatever you want to call him. I'm excited. You know, RJ is the type of guy who, you know, is clearly built for New York. He, this is the city he was drafted to and he's grown up through it and he's still grown. He's so young. You forget it, right? Because he's been here for so long, but he's still so young, but he's so poised and he's so prepared and he's um, just a, a grade A guy on and off the court. And one thing I love about RJ is, He gets consistently better each and every season and you can see those changes and you can see those developments in his game. Um, and I think that's so important because especially in a major city like New York, there's such, there's so many eyes on you. There's such a spotlight that if you're not getting better, people will know and the fans will know and they'll hold you accountable. And I think that he knows where he needs to grow and where he needs to get better. And he focuses on that and it shows in his game. So To have that type of leadership, um, to have that type of dedication, to have that type of dedication, not only to the fan base and to the franchise and the city, but to your own craft as a player. I mean, we're so lucky to have him. And um, I'm just really excited that we were able to get that deal done and that he's going to be part of the Knicks um, for a little bit, little while to come. So um, hopefully forever, but at least we know before <laughs> you get <so. laughs> Ah, You know, you know, in the last interview. 
<laughs> I love RJ Barrett. I yeah. love RJ Barrett. I super, super believe in this guy, Ash. Or, or ever, RJ Barrett, for me, will be a future all-star. Nice. You see. You see in the future. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, let's talk né, uh, about the, this new New York Knicks, yeah. okay? I want to talk with you about um, Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein. Yeah. What's your opinion about these guys uh, in New York Knicks? Well, Jalen, I think, you know, the obvious, he provides the much needed stability at the point guard position, right? You know, we've kind of been going through it when it comes to the point guard and to have a, a, a stable force at that position is going to make all the difference. You know, I know point guards are kind of hybrids now. You don't see like a lot of true point guards anymore. You know, Kyrie, for example, um, scores a lot more than, say, a traditional point guard does or at least is supposed to. Um, but I think that Jalen Brunson is going to, regardless of if he scores more than the, the position traditionally asked for, he's still going to be that driving force to help run the offense. And that's the most important thing, because if you look at a lot of the games that were close, um, whether we won or lost, or especially the games that we lost, it comes down to not having someone on the floor, that floor general to run the offense. So he's going to be monumental in that. Um, he seems to already have a good repertoire with the guys, the video of him, um, RJ and Jalen at Media Day, or Content Day as the Knicks were calling it, was great. And um, I think, you know, Isaiah, he provides a more of a multi-dimensional big man, big man rather. Um, you know, he has abilities to, you know, score the ball um, and, and go ahead and make a lot of um, playmaking abilities and things like that. That's a little bit more of that new um, hybrid big man versus a Mitchell Robinson, who I think is tends to be more of a traditional big man. Um, you know, his scoring is a little bit up and down. It seems like this guy is going to be more of a multidimensional player in that regard. So it's going to be super beneficial. And again, he provides the size, which is much needed on the floor for the New York Knicks. So I think both, you know, great pickups. I know I was a little apprehensive about the money we gave Jalen Brunson only because I think the team's still going to need some more additional pieces. Um, but, you know, if he can go ahead and provide what the Knicks need, and it seems like there's a lot of faith in him to be able to do that, then it will be worth it in the long run. So. Uh, Jalen Brunson, in beginning, like you, I don't like the price. <laughs> but but yeah. Knicks need so much uh, solid PG, and I believe uh, Jalen Brunson can help so much this team. And as Zaya Hartenstein, in begin, in begin, I don't like it. I don't like it. But so many people, Ash, so many people talking yeah. with me about this guy uh, say good things. And uh, now I like it. <laughs> yeah, and I am curious. Uh, open the floor. Yeah. Um, drives, drives. Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randall. Like the uh, drives in your yeah. in your games. He's gonna so really help. I, He's gonna really help to stretch that defense, which is which is gonna be huge. So it's you know it's 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 a good pickup. You know, it's not costing you know an arm and a leg, so it's it's a, it's a nice little uh, acquisition. I must, uh, but uh, is the same price compared with uh, Nerlens Noel, eight right? millions? Yeah, so and, hopefully it'll be more. Um, what's the word? Beneficial to the team. Yes. Was so D different skills compared with Mitchell Robinson, Jericho Sings. I like Jericho Sims, for example, too. Uh, and uh, I think interest. Uh, I, I am curious about this player with uh, Obi Topin, with so many players, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. In, yeah. in, uh, coming soon, Isaiah in the garden. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I am curious, too, about... Uh, our opinion in this channel, I, I talked so much with Nick fans. Uh, Comparate uh, Grimes and Fournier. In your opinion, which player do you prefer uh, to be a starter, uh, Grimes or Fournier? In your opinion, well, 
Fournier, you know, I think is the best spacer on the team. Um, so I can understand the rationale of wanting to start him. For me, though, I, I tend to prioritize defense, and Grimes is a better defensive player. Um, it'll be interesting, though, if Tibbs was, you know, the type of coach who was a little bit more flexible in his lineups, I would say, you know, start Evan, see how it works for, say, 10 to 20 games. If it's just not working, then, you know, switch out to Grimes and lose that spacing, but you get that defensive ability back. Um, Tibbs has shown that he's a little bit stubborn with his lineup. So mm. for me, knowing that, I would prefer to have Grimes in the starting lineup just straight off the bat. Um, because like I said, I prioritize defense, the spacing. I feel like you there's workarounds behind that. I think you, you need to go ahead and just have a defensive force at all times. That's more important to me. So for me, I would have I would be starting Grimes in my um, lineup come, you know, October. What is it? 17th or whatever the first game is. So. Is that going to happen? Probably not. <laughs> um, <but laughs> up to me, that would that would be the starting lineup and Fournier would come off the bench. So me too. Me too. I talk it so much with so many people about this. Uh, I prefer Grimes a starter, and and Fournier can can be so so useful from this team uh, from the bench. From yeah. the bench, it's a really good player uh, in three points. Nah, but it's my opinion. It's my yeah. opinion. The coach, <laughs> it's it's tips. Right. Um, talking about tips, do you see new style? From tips, beer now, like me. <laughs> I, I see the you beard. look. I see the beard. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm a fan of beard, so I'm not mad at it. Um, <laughs> if that new style, yeah. if that new style is going to translate to um, new coaching style, is the question. You know, I think you know Tibbs is like we've all said. He's he's stubborn and he's stuck in his ways, and he goes into the game with. A particular mindset and a particular lineup in in his mind and he doesn't really um waver from that you know it's not something mm -hmm. that he is very um willing to budge on and that's been detrimental in a lot of situations where um games have been close and games mm -hmm. have, have been stolen and we were right there in it and just a matter of adjusting the lineup to adhere to what was happening on the court so I hope that some of that stubbornness goes away this season. I hope that we see more flexibility in the lineups and the coaching decisions and time management of certain players. I can understand, um, you know, giving the vets certain privileges and leeway that you don't give the younger guys because they've earned it, right? They've been in the game, mm -hmm. the system, um, whether it's not just the Knicks system, but the NBA system as a whole, you know, they've earned certain privileges and I get that. And I'm not mad at it. That's just the inner workings of, the NBA and you're not going to bench, you know, one of your vets for a rook or, you know, for a young guy after a couple of bad games or a bad mistake, but uh -huh. you also have to go ahead and look at the season as a whole. And it's not personal, it's business and it's about winning games and people's egos can be pushed to the side. And, you know, you have those conversations with those guys and you let them know like, Hey, look, you know, winning games is the biggest priority. And mm -hmm. If you play well, I'm going to play you. If you don't play well, we're going to make some adjustments. And I think it's important to have those conversations from the beginning and set that precedent. And hopefully he's doing that. In Brazil, uh, so many people were angry with the chips in the last season. So many people. Uh, in my channel, two hashtags in the, the last season. Uh, <laughs> fire chips and tra trade Randall. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hashtags. Two hashtags. So many people. So many people in Brazil uh, with the hashtags. Uh, it's complicated. I understand people. Uh, the patience, uh, Nick fans. I talked with you in the last interview about this. The patience uh, from Nick's base. It's complicated because it so long time this team is not is not yeah. a contender. Right. No, I totally get it. You know, it's it's hard to be patient when you've been patient for, what, eight years? <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> um, but I think that you have to, with the patience comes, you know, the recognition of where we are. And we're a lot better mm -hmm. than where we were. Um, so that's important to recognize. 
um, I can understand the frustration and wanting things immediately and wanting things, you know, to see that return on, on all the despair and make it yes. worse. But I think it's important. It's more important to do things correctly than to do them quickly. And I, what I mean mm -hmm. by that is I'm not saying, you know, the Knicks shouldn't be aiming for the playoffs every single year. That should always be the goal, right? Because you're no longer in those very early rebuilding stages. You have a lot of pieces that you should be in the playoffs. Now, will you be a top seed? Maybe not, but you could be a middle seed, a lower seed, but you should be in the conversation every single year from this point forward and working towards that championship and that parade and constantly getting better. And the people within the organization, players included, should be held accountable for what they do good and what they do bad. And um, I think that it's okay to be frustrated and it's okay to want great things to the, from the team, but it's also important to be realistic. And realistically, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. It, it's I know it's been a long time. We're just going to have to wait a little <laughs> bit longer. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. I talked okay. with you in the last interview. I am Nick fan since '92. Uh, in '92, I I remember Patrick Ewing, John Starks, mm -hmm. Anthony Mason, and so many players. It's complicated. It's, it's complicated. Yeah. But, it's hard, it's difficult. But I love this team, Yash. I love this team. I love. <laughs> so uh, I understand. I, I, I hope. I hope uh, this team in two, three years more strong in this league. I really, really, really. But but uh, uh, two years ago, this team, nobody believes this team can, uh, in playoffs. Knicks in four. Four seed, four yeah. seed. Okay, yeah. and I mean, some people will say, you know, we reap the benefits of a really bad situation with the pandemic and things like that. But I think, you know, I think also some of that's probably true, and I think a lot of teams did. You know, it was no yes. fans, it was different environments, and I think that worked for the advantage of a lot of teams. I don't think the Knicks were, you know, the minority in that conversation. I think it was the case for a lot of people, but I think with that. You also saw a lot of good things. You saw what this team mm -hmm. could be. And, you know, to do that with not a lot of pieces. Remember, we did that with the team of Derrick Rose, Julius Randle, um, you know, RJ Barrett. You know, it wasn't like we went ahead and, you know, did that with this great team. It was a team that was desolate in a lot of ways. And it just goes to show what is possible with these guys. And now that you've gotten even better. Um, it shows you, you know, what you should be aiming for. And again, the situations are different. Um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, it's teams have gotten better in the East. The East is no longer the East. Honestly, might be the better conference now. Um, you know, it's it's different. It's going to be hard. But I think that this team is capable. And it's just about making sure the pieces you have work well together and how you can go ahead and work with what you got until you start going to that next tier and building and preparing for that next level. And the Julius Randle, in your opinion, uh, can be better now with Jalen Brunson in this team? Absolutely. I think people, you know, don't give Julius the benefit of the doubt. And I get it. New York's a tough place to play. It's a tough place to be from. Um, you know, people are rough around the edges and we're not always the nicest. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, I think Julius, you know, he had a bad season and whatever was going on with him personally and professionally has started to blend. And I think that people forget that athletes are human, you know, and they go mm -hmm. through things just like we do. And, you know, I think about you on your worst day or a really hard point in your life and still having to go in front of, you know, national television and, and, and full arenas and, and play when you're not a hundred percent. Okay. You know, it's gotta be difficult and it weighs on you. Um, I think he's in a much better place. Um, he looks great. Like the videos of him training and, and, you know, conditioning, he looks fantastic. And I think with Julius, it was also a little bit on coaching and, and management in front office. I think he went into that season thinking his role was going to be one thing and it ended up being something different. And that confusion only adds to your frustration when it's not resulting in wins. I think that everyone needs to have a clear, concise, um, idea of what their role is. And I think that makes all mm -hmm. the difference. When you go into a game, when you go into a season and you know who's your primary ball handler, you know who your closer is, you know who your enforcer is, 
you know what everyone's role is, it makes you be able to perfect that box, to perfect that role and focus on that. When you go in there and you're like, okay, what am I doing today? Like whose job is what? It adds confusion, not just for you, but for the team. And it's frustrating for everybody watching it. So I think he's going to be much better. I think there's going to be a clear, concise, this is your role, Julius, this is what I need you to do. And I think he's going to be good in it. Uh, for me, it's big problem, uh, Julius Randall, in the last season here. Uh, right. Julius Randall, better uh, in your mind, your personal life, etc. For me, I just want Julius, play well, guy. Play well, play well Absolutely. with this team. For me, yeah. I love New York Knicks. Uh, I like Barry, <laughs> that <Derrick> Rose, <laughs> but I love New York Knicks, okay? New Julius Randle, play better. For me, it's good. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. So I I, I want uh, your opinion too about uh, the younger uh, roster, uh, younger roster. What's your you your opinion about these younger players? Love them. Big fan of everything they've showcased. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin. I have been since day one. I was so excited when we drafted Obi. He was who I wanted from the jump. Um, you know, like I told Knicks fans after his rough season, you got to be patient. He didn't have a true uh, rookie experience. Um, so it made it a little bit... Um, you know, he was supposed to be quote unquote NBA ready, but no rookie is really NBA ready unless you're like the second coming of Michael Jordan. And even he had stuff he had to work <laughs> So I think that with a true ex rookie experience like he had um, in his second year, he wasn't a rookie at that point, but he had the rookie experience a year later. You can see mm -hmm. much more confidence from him. You can see much more, um, you know, more clear vision of what he's doing, what his role is, stuff like that. But um, I love them. I think there's so much promise there. I'm so glad we got to keep them together. That was one of my things that I was really worried about with the Donovan and Mitchell situation. I didn't want to get rid of the young guys. I think there's so much promise there. And I think whenever you can take a guy and grow him within the same organization from when he's young to when he starts to enter his prime years, you really can see the true benefits of that. Look at R.J. Barrett. You know what I mean? You look mm -hmm. at a player like a John Morant. You look at some of the other guys across the league, Jason Tatum, you know, when you can take a guy and develop, develop him and mold him consistently from season to season within the same organization and keep a stability of foundation, keep the same coaching staff, keep the same front office, which the Knicks has have had a problem with in the past, um, but we're getting better <laughs> at it. it. It's beneficial. And I'm a big fan. I hope they get more playing minutes. I hope Tibbs plays the kids, as we like to say. Like, yes, <laughs> I think they're ready, and I think that they'll they're ready, and they'll reap the benefits of more playing time. It's only going to help them in the future. So, this this is production. I play the kids. I hear so right. play kids. <laughs> so much, so much. Uh, I I do you saw? Uh, do you watch? Uh, Leon Rose interview with uh, Alan Hur Alan Hub and Leon Rose. I didn't, but I saw some clips on Twitter. <laughs> it was um, <laughs> it was an interesting conversation. Um, you know, <laughs> it was an interesting conversation because I can. Uh, I I, I, yeah, I think soft. I think soft. Soft yeah. interview. In my my opinion. My opinion. But yeah. I, I ask it to you, Ash, because I, I am worried in the in this team about uh, Ken Reg, for example. Uh, in your opinion, this guy can be a chance in this team because uh, I think this player can be so so uh, useful for, from this team. I like okay. this guy. I like Cam Reddish a lot too. Um, I was definitely disappointed with his lack of minutes last season um he seemed ready and and you know willing to go ahead and get out there confused on his lack of you know lack of using it really um so i hope that that changes i know there was some reports out there that he was frustrated he wanted to leave and maybe there's some truth to that you know but you have to understand when you are not being utilized and you're ready to play and you're willing to play and you're willing to go ahead and, and put in the work and you just don't get that opportunity, it's frustrating. You know, these guys are competitors. They want to go out there and play games. They want to win. 
So when you don't get the opportunity to do that, it's frustrating. Um, I saw a clip that the Knicks put out recently, earlier today with Cam Reddish, you know, speaking and, you know, he handled it well, the questioning well, and he's ready to go. So I hope that Tibbs, you know, is taking notes of all of this. And I hope that the guys who are prepared to play and ready to play and ready to go get those opportunities. And, um, you know, I, I hope that he's part of that equation because I feel like he can add a lot to the team for sure. Hi, me too. I, I, I want to see more. Keekley, I, I am a big fan from Keekley too. Uh, I want to see so so many guys from yeah. f- th- th- these younger players. So uh, the last question, Ashley, mm-hmm. uh, what's your uh, expectations <laughs> the, the New York Knicks in the in the next season? What uh, oh. the, what's your opinion? Uh, do you believe in playoffs? Evan talk play in. What's the Knicks winning? streak <laughs> for the season talk with me about i try my very best not to go into expectations with the new york <laughs> Slow. It's how I, it's how I, I, they protect myself from the pain um you know i think that a lot of a, a lot of the fat has been trimmed i think that where we have a great team um you know i'm definitely a fan of the squad that we've put together mm-hmm. I know the East is extremely competitive. There's a lot of great teams. There are teams that have gotten better. Um, you know, Boston's out there and the Nets are at full force now, you know, Milwaukee and Miami and, you know, Atlanta. And there's a there's a lot of competition. So it's not going to be an easy task at all. Um, but I think that what's important is that you compete. You know, one thing I really liked about the Knicks team that went to that fourth seed um, in the playoffs the year before last was it was a team that when they stepped onto the court, whether you were the Lakers or the Bucks or, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, the Golden State Warriors, they felt that they could beat you. They had that tenacity about them. They had that New York grittiness, you know, that gulliness, as we like to call it. And they didn't care who you were. They were going to go out there and they were going to compete and they were going to try to win. And you lost that last season. They looked defeated before the game even began or the first sign of trouble, the first sign of things not going well. It's almost like they gave up. So for me, I want that tenacity back. I want to see that. I want to see the heart. I want to see the drive to go ahead and compete. And listen, you're not going to win every single game. It's not going to be easy. You're going to go on losing streaks. It's going to get frustrating. You know, you're going to go into cities. You're not going to get the calls, you know. Yes. Superstars are going to get superstar calls and the Knicks notoriously don't get a lot of love from the refs. And it's going to be a difficult season, 82 games, difficult season. But if you compete each and every one, that's what the fans want to see. They want to see you give it your all. So for me, my expectation is that I want to see you guys compete. I want to see you guys step on that court looking to win every single game, regardless of how it plays out, playing four quarters of basketball, four quarters of offense, four quarters of defense. And regardless of that outcome, I can say, you know what? We tried. Next one. Here we go. Next one. So obviously playoffs is is a goal. But for me, my main goal is I want to see these guys compete. And when you compete, when you put in the work, you know, good things happen. So that's my expectation. Whoa. I totally (laughs) agree. I I will need uh, good claps. In, the, in this part, in, the, in this interview. Whoa, coach, right? whoa. Needs whoa. To me. I could be his assistant. Whoa, I totally agree with you. I, whoa. <laughs> I can't say nothing later. <laughs> Your comments. So, um, Ashley, I, I, I just want to see uh, the Knicks great. I, I, just, I just want, but we we have a patience. We, uh, we need... Um, um uh believe uh, mm. in this job from chips this thing it's complicated it's complicated in brazil actually yeah. uh so many people another uh teams channels joking so much about the nick so much yeah, it's, i talk it fruit whatever oh i talk it uh, with american friends uh talking with me in the united states out from new york is the same like mm-hmm. in Brazil. 
It's complicated. I just, I just want it. the Knicks no jokes more with this team. Ah, yeah, Ashley. Oh my I God. <laughs> It's I complicated. Know. We all do, but listen, patience. And the Knicks jokes, they're old. The Knicks <laughs> jokes aren't even funny anymore. They're old jokes. They've been, I've been hearing them since I was like 10. It's not funny anymore. So I'm not worried about that. The Knicks... The Knicks will be fine. It's just, just not, everyone needs to just know it's not going to happen overnight. But I, I have a good feeling about this squad. So fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe too. I believe too. I agree totally with you. I, I, I uh, just um, say, say thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Really. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, I really happy really happy with yeah. you in this channel i hope you really hope you you enjoy uh again uh i will put uh subtitles now later in this video uh i hope you like it and Hello. you come yeah. back in the future Hello. and i hope meet you uh in uh when this channel make a trip <laughs> i will i will tell so before né, this trip, but uh, really, thank you so much for your time. Okay. I know you're very busy. Uh, <laughs> I, I am a big fan from your job, really. Oh, I am a big fan you. from your job and uh, I like you so much. For me, for me, it's a great honor. I'm really happy here. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you so much. Okay, and mm -hmm. I hope to see you again in this channel. Definitely. <laughs> okay? Okay, thank you so much. Peace. Bye bye. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né, no YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas 7.99 por mês, apenas 7.99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fez Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan.